Hey guys, how's it going? It's Pradeet here with Odds Jam. I uh, wanted to bring you a positive EV bet for tonight's Pittsburgh Steelers versus Chicago Bears game. So as you can see, I'm checking out the Odds Jam positive EV bets betting section. Obviously, the first one here is the one we're going to be talking about today. That's the Pittsburgh Steelers, Chicago Bears, longest completion for Justin Fields. So you can see here, we're going to go with the under 31 and a half. Uh, that's currently with with the odd jam perfect line, minus 173, and you can get it at FanDuel for minus 106. So that's a huge, huge positive EV betting opportunity, 15.5% roughly. Um, after you look at the no VIG fair odds, you can see that it's about 60% chance for it to hit. Um, no VIG, and uh, it, it no VIG looks like around 146, whereas this hitting is plus 146. So I'd take those odds pretty much any day. Um, so as you can see, minus 106, win percentage of 59% most of the time. With my Kelly multiplier, I have it wagering 81, but I'm going to round that up to $100 dollars do my $100 positive EV bet play of the day. So you can see here, are you locked it in, ready to go? Um, moving into the game itself, um, it is currently looking at an over-under of 37 and a half points. So clearly it's going to be a low-scoring game. At least that's what Vegas thinks. So in that sense, you're definitely looking at something like, all right, well, if it's going to be lower scoring, you're probably not going to be getting those big plays. You're probably, it's probably going to be one of those grinded out games, which is what I think everyone is expecting with such a low scoring to total and two offenses that historically have been struggling the last few weeks. So this is definitely ripe for the picking. Essentially, getting 15% positive EV is, is huge in a game that you feel like it could be pretty easy. Um, so again, looking at some of the some of the analysis here, we have in front of you Justin Fields stats, his game log for this year. So including preseason, which I mean doesn't go into too much, but um, including all the games he's played this year, he's only only gone over 30 yards. He's only gone over 25 yards once in terms of his longest pass completion. And that was against the Detroit Lions, which we all know the Detroit Lions have yet to win a game this season. So that was a 64-yard pass. Other than that, he's only gone 22 yards. He has not eclipsed a 22-yard pass. And, and what's really evident about this is in the last four weeks, he has not done this. So to me, that screams, okay, well, if he hasn't done it in the last four weeks, that clearly means that they're game planning for him not to be a long pass thrower. They're going to be using his legs to utilize him to run around. He's going to be doing a lot of short passes. And uh, the, the defense it's as well is that what they want to do is keep everything in front of them. So that's what you see here. You can see the San Francisco, Tampa Bay, Green Bay, all of which were pretty good defenses, and Vegas um, held him to something, to, to a, a long pass of 22 yards and under. So that's huge. Again, the way they game plan the Chicago Bears, they want to run first. They want to use him more so in his legs and the run pass option. So there's not going to be very many long balls. Um, they're, they're historic, they've been historically this season kind of a lower scoring team. Um, so you can see against the San Francisco 49ers, they put up 22. Uh, Buccaneers, they only put up three points. Green Bay, 14. Vegas, they did put up 20. Detroit put up 24. So a um, little lower, though, uh, based off of a lot of the offenses in the league, uh, showing that their offense is still very young. Um, and and very ripe. So this is something that I, I definitely want to take advantage of even before seeing it on Odds Jam. And so Odds Jam just basically confirmed it for me. Um, in terms of who he has to throw to, obviously everyone who's been playing fantasy football is probably pretty disappointed in Allen Robinson. He's he's borderline droppable at this point. So having him there as really the only reliable option and him not performing very well at all, that's a huge, huge sign that this is something that can go under pretty easily. Um, and obviously the odds reflect that. As you can see here, um, we have a lot more stats in terms of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Now, historically, we know that the defense is pretty good. Um, so you can see that in terms of their opponents that they played, um, they, they held most of them in terms of passing yards to, to pretty good passing yard stats. Obviously, this, this league is moved more towards a pass happy league. Um, and you can see here that the pass attempts reflect that. But um, it, 
comparing to what you see in the pass attempts and the pass yards, it's been a very good passing defense for Pittsburgh and being at home will definitely help them as well. Um, another thing I want you guys to check out is the pass average. You can see that on average, the only one team, the Denver Broncos, who were behind the entire game, um, they were the only ones who were actually able to have a passing average of more than 10 yards. So that right there shows you that the, the Pittsburgh defense also likes to keep everything, like I said, in front of them. They're not going to let that big play up. They generally keep plays no more than five to seven yards. It seems like only two times they've gone over uh, seven yards, three times they've gone over seven yards, uh, and then four games they've gone under uh, six yards, so five yards per pass average, which is great because this is just telling you more, more confirmation that this is the right play. This is what it's looking like for Justin Fields tonight. He's going to have to be throwing a lot of dink and dunk passes. There's, they're going to have to try to establish the run because the pass defense for the Pittsburgh Steelers are definitely – trying to keep everything in front of them. And, and Justin Fields being a rookie quarterback definitely bodes well for experienced defense like the Pittsburgh Steelers. So again, quickly run through here. We have the, um, let's, uh, uh, no worry about that. But we, we have the 15.46% tonight at 820. So make sure you lock this in on FanDuel. It is with the odds, JR perfect odds, minus 173. We get, we're getting the longest passing, passing completion for Justin Fields under minus 106 on FanDuel, which will give us a 15.5% EV bet. I'm going to be putting $100 on it because I'm confident in this one. And um, looking at the no big fair odds, it's minus 146 to hit, which is very good. 60% uh, chance to hit and 40% um, chance to not hit. So I think I'll take those odds pretty much any day of the week. Generally, like I said, when I'm seeing everything on positive EV betting for odds jam, what I'm looking at for the most part is something that is over roughly 8 to 10% and gives me something close to a 60% win percentage. And I feel like I fared pretty well thus far. So again, looking at the data, I think it's safe to say that Justin Fields is not going to be throwing something too deep this, this week uh, tonight. And uh, I'm, I'm happy and I'm confident that this was there. But again, we had only 164, one yard, one game where he goes over 31 yards in the longest pass. And that was five weeks ago. So I think he settled down and more to a dink and dunk passer. So I think this is a perfect play for everyone. So this is Puneet. You guys can catch me on Twitter at betarbs, at B-E-T-A-R-B-S. And um, good luck. Happy betting. Happy watching the game tonight. Take care, y'all.